On this episode of DIY Explorer, simple project, vertical cat climbing wall. Let's dig in. Five, four, three, two, one, zero. So this is a simple project. It's going to be a vertical climbing wall made out of the same tube that we use for the cat tower. Uh, it's real simple, couple of cuts. You can do it. Let's go see. No, let's see. Just watch. I don't know. Just keep watching. All right, the first thing I had to do was measure my wall. Three feet, six inches, and that'll be the length of our cat climbing pole. You could use a hand saw like this Japanese saw or a circular saw. Or you could choose to use a miter saw like this. Any of those ways will get you a fairly straight cut and it's pretty easy to do with the cardboard. So what I'm going to do is now mark the inside of the tube on some scrap wood. All the wood you're seeing here is scrap wood from my previous project. And we're going to cut these holes out and you'll see in a little bit what we're going to use them for. We're going to need two of those. And as you can see, the first cut doesn't exactly fit, and that's all right. So what I did was compared to the other one, and we're just gonna take a little bit off that piece. And easily done. As you can see now, it'll fit inside. And you'll see how the rest of this comes together. Next, we're going to mark the width of our top and bottom pieces. And then we're going to take the cutout and put it in the tube to keep it nice and circular and then trace the pattern of outside of that so that we can cut those later. And I think I did about four inches from the edge of the tube to have it stick out. Now what we're going to do is cut these pieces out with the table saw. You can use a circular hand saw as well. And back to the miter saw, so we're going to cut these pieces down into the various parts. And So right now we're just going to make the shelf supports. If you want to know more about that circular saw, it's in the notes below, link to my video about it. And perfectly together and so what we're doing is just going to nip off a little bit of the end to make it fit. So now I'm going to cut off the pieces that would go against the wall. So now we're going to measure up and mark the center and as I'm getting older I'm finding that metric works much easier for stuff like that. Cut out the first piece. Just a moment. So we have merch. And my favorite one, I build stuff for my cats. Go to DIYExplorer.com. We can pick it up there. Uh, also, I'm giving away a free t-shirt every month to a subscriber on my email list. Just go to DIYExplorer.com. And back to the action. So now we have the top and bottom. So now we're going to take a 2x6 and rip that down to the width of the inside of the tube, about 4 inches. And then we're going to cut that down minus the thickness of the 3 quarter inch plugs we're going to put in the end. So now we're going to shave off some of the edges of the square board just to make it fit a little bit easier into the tube. You do not have to put the solid board down the middle, but it makes it a more secure climbing pole. Throw the end caps back on because we're going to put this baby together. So you're going to screw along that board all the way down on both sides. 
that kind of holds the tube in place. And just like I said, it makes a more secure climbing wall. And now we're going to use some standard deck screws to secure the end plugs to the board down the center of the tube. And I'm going to route the edges of the pieces that go against the wall. You don't have to do that. If you got solid wood, it looks better. Plywood. So these are all the pieces for your brackets that will attach to the tube and attach it to the wall. So what I'm going to do now here is use my handy dandy conversion kit to turn my table saw into a sander. I have a video of this coming out pretty soon. This is a pretty cool tool so if you have a table saw you can really use it for more than just cutting. And of course sanding everything down, fun. So because I use plywood I am doing edge banding along all the pieces just to give it a little bit more refined finish. If you use solid wood, you don't really have to do this section, so you can skip over to about seven minutes in this video. Edge banding is pretty straightforward and simple. You just use a, an old iron and you put it on the edge and just glue it on. Most edge banding material comes with glue on the back of it, which makes it easy. It's more of a pain than, than anything, from my experience cut the edges and then finish gluing and then finish up all the other pieces so you can buy tools that'll cut the edge banding and I just found a knife works just as well and you'll do that to every piece that you edge banded and if you're using wood edge banding you can sand it Now that the wood is edge banded and sanded, we can stain it. I'm using an ebony wood stain that will leave a grain. After about five minutes, you would just wipe it off and it turns out real nice. And of course now the sisal rope where you basically glue the edge, first one glue the whole perimeter and then wrap and glue every few wraps. You can use a hammer to pound it down. This took about 30 minutes. And when you get to the end, you just glue it down with your hot glue gun and you're set for the next step. So now we're going to assemble the top and bottom brackets that will attach to the wall. Again, mark the center. draw a line. Nice little chalk pencil I found. So right here I'm marking the points where you would pre-drill to attach the tops to it. Center it all up here. Get it all make sure it's looking good. And don't forget the wood glue of course. So we put everything together with I think one and a quarter inch screws. If you want a more in depth like how to build just let me know in the comments and I will do a second edit of this for a step by step. And now I countersunk the pre-drilled holes so the screws would insert and be flush. Of course measure for center again even though I pre-drilled the holes you just want to double check things you want to clamp that down to hold it center and then basically screw it in just double checking make sure it's all square and in place move the glue and add the final screws to the brackets and there we go. Mama Kitty.
หายมามาโอ้ At this point, I was going to put it together, and I realized I did not pre-drill the holes to attach the brackets to the wall. So that's what we did right there. Now we are attaching everything at the end. Pre-drill, countersink holes. Now you could cover those up. I don't think people are going to see them in the place I'm going to install it. So you're good to go. And there you have it, our finished vertical cat scratching post. Installation was a little bit of a pain. Laser level is an amazing tool to get everything straight and level. Next, I used a corkscrew type of wall anchor. I secured it with one screw, and then using the level and a traditional level, made sure it's in its proper place. Using a drill bit, I marked each hole on the wall where I was going to drill. I had an eager little kitten ready to use it, but wasn't quite yet, so just had to move her out of the way. So after marking holes to drill, I took it off the wall, drilled the holes, and inserted the rest of the screw anchors. The whole installation process took about 30 minutes. MJ tried first. And then I had her try a second time. And finally, Tater Tot came to the rescue to have a demo. To this day, MJ still will not climb up that pole. All the other kitties use it every morning when they're headed out to the catio, and they love it. So it's been a few months now since we installed this, and I'll tell you the traffic from my desk to the catio here has been cut in half. Now it's only exit traffic, not an entr entrance. Um, pole's holding up good. It's holding tight to the wall. Um, I would change, probably I would put some sisal rope glued to the top of this because I kind of climb over. Uh, otherwise, it's doing great. I say, if you like the video, hit the like up. So if you want to leave a comment, I'll answer all the questions I possibly can. Uh, the keyword is tater tot, so that I know that you watched it this far. So thanks for watching, and see you in another video. Tater. Tater. Well, that was... I don't know. <laughs> it doesn't matter because I don't have a mic on. <laughs>